Welcome to another session. My name is uh, Niels Knudsen. I'm a subject matter expert at uh, Knudsen SAP ATM Security. Uh, Knudsen SAP ATM Security were founded in 2006 uh, and uh, our main focus is uh, security within SAP ATM. You'll be able to find more information about us on uh, www.knudsen.com. So let's get started with the presentation. We will have to go through some uh, thoughts uh, and you will have to go and take some decisions when you are setting up the structural authorizations. Um, there are different kind of business needs uh, which will require structural authorizations. Some of those are, uh, for example, the um, HR partners who need uh, access to those employees uh, they are responsible for. It could also be project managers um, who need access uh, to those uh, employees who have entered the, or a lot of time on the projects. Uh, it could also be line managers who need access to their uh, employees, uh, such uh, perhaps even except from trainees. Uh, and then we could also have instructors who need access to those learners who is participating on their courses. So all those kinds of uh, business needs uh, can be solved by structural authorizations. When we are uh, using the structural authorization, they will be used in conjunction with some uh, authorization objects. Uh, and the most common one is uh, the uh, p -op in con. Uh, this is the context-specific authorization objects for HR, um, which is used today. And um, then we have PHAP doc, uh, the uh, authorization object for appraisal documents, for uh, performance appraisals. But let's uh, show you the um, um, uh, PO in con in a uh, derived role. So here we have a uh, derived role. I've opened up the PO in con object here, and you can see we have some organizational levels like personal area, and then we also have the structural profiles here which has been created as an organizational level because it tells you where I have access and you see we can find it among all the uh, structural profiles we have and then you can select it. This one, um, in this case we have uh, this uh, structural uh, profile set up as an organizational level uh, together with personal areas. It could also be with uh, employee uh, subgroups. A and the same goes for uh, the PHAP doc uh, setup. So let's go back to the uh, presentation. We have uh, some concepts <coughs> which we are using when we're setting up the structural authorizations. Uh, the first one is uh, the one-to-one -one principle. This is where you have one business role uh, and one uh, structural profile together. So each time you are having a new business role, you will also create a new uh, structural profile if you need uh, structural access. Then you have the next uh, concept here. This is where you have as few structural profiles as possible. This is where you have one structural profile used by many roles. Um, this one is uh, reusing the structural profiles and uh, it reduces the amount of structural profiles which is the benefit uh, from a performance point of view, especially for users who have many uh, structural profiles or many business roles. Uh, the first one, the one-to-one uh, -one principle, uh, the most common one, is actually the easiest to maintain in production because here you have one uh, structural profile per business role and it make, it's transparent. So you can see that you have uh, a HR partner role, then you will also have a HR partner profile or you have a uh, learning administrator, you will have a learning administrator profile. Easy to, to grab. There might also be some considerations and there are some cons regarding setting up the structural uh, authorizations. One of those most authorization consultants does not have knowledge about uh, structural authorizations. Uh, and the same goes for those in the user administration. So when you're setting up uh, 
the social authorizations. Please be, be have in mind uh, to set them up together with the PFCD rules so they're easy to, to handle and maintain in operation. Also, automatic assignment of them would be a benefit, quite advisable. Um, if you have a large amount of uh, structural profiles, it will have a negative impact uh, on your performance. So keep, keep an eye on them and see if there's any uh, merging scenarios that you can come up with uh, so you can keep the number of structural profiles uh, to a minimum. You will also have to consider in the decision of using structural profiles uh, whether it is used outside of HR because it might be used also in logistic, it could be used in finance. For finance it could be travel management, uh, in logistic it could be for uh, uh, projects where you are uh, assigning uh, an employee responsible for a project. So you have to take those in mind as well. When you're setting up the profiles, then you have uh, two uh, setups for structural profiles. You have the fixed structural profiles and you have the dynamic structural profiles. The fixed structural profiles is where you have a uh, root object, could be in the organizational structure, together with an evaluation path that will drill down in the structure and grant you access to those objects uh, dictated by the evaluation path. You can also use it without any uh, evaluation path and that would actually be a benefit for uh, the performance. This is typically used for employment handlers, for payroll clerks, uh, for time administrators, um, those who are handling employees within uh, national borders or regions. Uh, the other one is the dynamic structural authorizations, genius. Um, it makes use of function modules. So you can actually pick up um, some attributes on the user uh, or from those uh, employees the user is allowed to access. Um, the most common one is the line manager. This is based on a relation and here you are using the um, person-user relation uh, maintained in uh, the communication info type 105 uh, and then you can actually grant access to the uh, line manager's employees through uh, one structural profile. So don't have to create a structural profile for each manager, just one and then use the uh, function module, I it gets manager assignment. When you're setting up customer relations, because it's also a relation which is used for, for the manager, um, then you can create it together with your own function modules. It's absolutely standard uh, uh, and it, it works fine. But please consider the maintenance of the relations because it's piece of cake to set up those relations but to stay clean and to maintain them afterwards and perhaps get rid of them, that's another story. And those procedures are often forgotten, unfortunately. So consider if there are other attributes which is on our employees anyhow, which can be used instead of setting up a new relation. That might be uh, worth considering. <coughs> Then we have um, the um, evaluation paths, but before I will show you the structural profiles. So we'll have to go to OSP, and uh, here we have uh, the line manager. This is a piece of cake setting up. You can see here I have for root object O, we have an uh, evaluation path, and then we have this function module that makes the trick. So the Root object is uh, uh, the ID is empty, and then you will actually just pick up the uh, ID for the line manager. The next one I'm showing you is actually a fixed structure uh, authorization, and this one is uh, having the ID here, and then we have an evaluation path. It will uh, go directly into the, the organization structure, and then use the evaluation path to drill down and grant you access. You don't need to be assigned anywhere in the structure to use this one. The other one here, display is another form of uh, fixed structural um, uh, profile. It actually has no indication of ID, it just grants you access to the object types. So you have all object types. From a performance point of view, this is really, really efficient. But it's just grants you access to all organizational units or 
all positions, uh, all jobs, etc. Yep. The evaluation paths um, is, is quite essential for, for the structural uh, authorizations. Uh, you can set them up in this transaction 008W. Uh, and when you are setting them up, please avoid recursions. They will mess up the structural authorizations. You can also create one evaluation path per structural profile. It, it makes it transparent. It gives you uh, an enhanced flexibility for maintaining um, specific structural profiles without having an impact on others. Then you can also um, before you are using those evaluation paths for your structural profiles, you can test them in the transaction called PPSS. Um, so you can actually see if they are granting access to those objects you want them to grant access to. But let's try to have a look at, at it. So in uh, this case, I have an, um, the PPSS and I want to access my structure, but now I can see, oops, I'm I having a loop going from position to job, back to position, back to job, etc. etc. So this is not uh, this is not good. And we actually have to see uh, the error in the uh, evaluation path, so O A W. And then we'll go to um, where I have uh, uh, where I can maintain my uh, evaluation paths. And see here I have this one recursion. And I will show you what happens. It goes through the organization structure, it finds the positions, goes to the jobs, it goes from job back to position, and then it loops. So this is not good. So when you are setting up uh, those evaluation paths, please cl keep them clean. Uh, try to avoid um, uh, repeating uh, object types uh, in, in those evaluation paths. Yes, you need to be in control of your structural profiles. So when you are um, creating them, please keep in mind that they are easy to use in production and align them with your business rules. Don't just create one after the other because it will uh, create redundant uh, um, profiles. Um, and it will end up with an uh, like an unstructured patchwork. So please keep them uh, uh, true to your uh, concept, whether it's a one-to-one -one or uh, uh, where you are reusing the structural profiles. Make sure to document what you're doing and make sure that you are actually telling others what is the purpose of this structural profile. Uh, because you might not be there when uh, uh, they are live. So it's really, really important to have uh, knowledge, uh, also considering that there's a lot of authorization uh, consultants and uh, user administration supporters who don't have uh, knowledge about structural authorizations. Um, also, from the other point, remember to describe in the PFCG rules if they need access uh, from structural profiles and then also uh, describe which structural profiles they are using. That's just what memory. Then we have the prerequisites for using structural profiles. Yes, integration between PA and OM is switched on, otherwise it will not work. Uh, also when you're having, this is mostly for uh, terminate employees, uh, but when they are terminated, uh, they should remain assigned to the old organizational unit they came from, because then you will actually be able to uh, access them. Um, in some cases, we have hourly employees, uh, um, which is not part of the structure. And to access those employees, you can either create your own uh, function module, which uh, uh, grabs them based on, for example, employee subgroup, um, or you can actually also uh, grant access through the uh, structural profile all. The function module is absolutely preferred because um, this will uh, you will then remain structural control. Then we have this default position regarding uh, the terminated employees, uh, the 99999 position. Uh, it's used for terminated employees and um, 
as long as you keep them assigned to an organizational unit, you'll be able to access them from a structural point of view. The structural authorization uh, setup for default position can be customized, and you have different kind of options. I just mentioned two, there's actually four. Uh, but one is to grant access to uh, employees um, uh, on the default positions who is outside the structure, or delimit them from granting access. This is actually two options. I'll just show you here. In this case, we have the employee who has been uh, terminated. Um, we have uh, two uh, actions in this case. I could be more, but um, i just show you that we have a, we have a hiring uh, action and then we have a leaving action. And it's actually uh, the info type one uh, which I'm interested in regarding the leaving action which we have here, the organizational assignment. And then we'll be able to see that this employee is actually on the default position. But look at this one. There's still an organizational unit assigned to this employee, despite he is actually terminated. This one secures the structural access for our employee. So keep this one. Then I will show you where you can customize the um, default position. It's OOAC. And you will actually see here, we have uh, all the settings, the main switches for the uh, HR authorization. We have uh, structural authorization check, it's switched on. We have uh, the INCON, this is for p INCON, switched on. And then we have here, uh, the DEFCON. And here we have four different kind of uh, options, uh, where you have uh, uh, to consider this uh, before you are um, um, going live. It has a, a significant impact on our on our structural profile. <coughs> Let's go back to the presentation. You can actually index the structural profiles uh, instead of uh, letting the system uh, drilling down in the um, uh, relation database each time that you are meeting an authorization a structural check. Uh, in large HTM setups, this might be required. Um, and you can actually um, uh, handle it, uh, uh, either it is a reduced amount of users who is going to be indexed, or all of them. Normally I would take uh, either or, all on, on the nobody. The pros for, for using uh, this one is actually uh, the performance increase, and it's actually really, really good. <laughs> it works. And the cons, yes, you don't have access to um, to online uh, uh, newly created objects. So if you have uh, a newly created, uh, it could be position, organizational unit, it could be also a uh, course based on course type, you will not have access to them before the index has been regenerated. I will just show you how to uh, generate the index. We have two uh, uh, transactions here. We have this one, this is the first one, which actually um, puts the user into a table called T77UU, which will tell the system that we need to build an index. In this case, you can see that we have the user who uh, is uh, fulfilling the criteria. Now I put a test mark on, so it will not uh, enter him, as you can see. And when this user has been entered to T77UU, we can actually run this uh, report where you are building up the index. Um, it's also called RH BAUX00. When you have done this, then it's time for testing. Um, I showed the PPSS. There's also PPMDT, the old version of uh, Manager Self Service. Then you have SU53. You have uh, the trace. The trace is not really useful. But this one, HR Auth, this transaction is brilliant, brilliant. It really shows you uh, all kinds of uh, uh, issues and uh, what is set up uh, within uh, HR authorizations. I will actually create another session for this one. Then we have OSB. Um, in this one, you also have an uh, option for seeing uh, the structural profiles assigned to the users and see which objects is actually assigned. This is an, a uh, small functionality in, inside this uh, transaction you can use. Yep, that was the session. Thank you for listening. And we will be back 